Hi everyone, this is Yanilin and welcome back to my gaming channel. Today we're going to discuss about how Nomura-san was able to include Pixar titles, who is actually in charge of the cutscenes in Kingdom Hearts 3, and the potential collaboration with Marvel and Lucasfilm. This is part 2 of the Kingdom Hearts Ultimania series. So make sure to subscribe to this channel for more. The link to the translation is in the description box below, so feel free to use it as long as you credit this channel. Yanirin channel. Our interviewer Akira Yamashita asks, Due to the Disney Group's acquisition of Pixar after the release of Kingdom Hearts 2, didn't the options of appearing worlds widely expand this time? Actually, at the time of production of Kingdom Hearts 2, we prototyped renders of characters from Monsters Inc. and Toy Story. Negotiations were also underway in order to include them in the game. It was eventually turned down, so I started renegotiations with the thought that if we can't use Pixar titles, we can't make Kingdom Hearts 3. But due to changes in the situation of Disney and Pixar, we made progress towards realization. This time, even after we finalized the selection of the worlds, Disney and Pixar continued to create attractive titles that later I often thought to myself, I wanted to include that title too. So during the development of Kingdom Hearts 2, Nomura-san already thought of including Pixar titles such as Toy Story and Monsters Inc. They even created models of Woody and Buzz, but they were never used in KH2. But without these titles, he couldn't make Kingdom Hearts 3. The fact that Nomura-san was able to convince these giants to hand over their IPs is astonishing. He also mentioned that there were other attractive titles that he wanted to include in Kingdom Hearts. I wonder which movies he was referring to. Moving on. So it was the top priority of Kingdom Hearts 3 to make Monsters Inc. and Toy Story appear. But the hurdles until it was decided were higher than expected. First, I went to the US twice and negotiated. First of all, without a plot, it wouldn't progress. So I wrote a plot for Toy Box when I haven't even written the main story yet. Afterwards, after a considerable period of negotiations and getting into the nitty-gritty part of the plan, they finally granted us permission. Since it was our first time with Pixar this time, we built a relationship with Toy Story and worked on other titles based on that. It's interesting how Nomura-san started writing the plot for Toy Box even when he hasn't worked on the main one yet, all for the sake of getting these IPs. But now that they have experience working with Pixar as well, we could say that it will be much easier for them to include future titles in the next installment. Moving on to the story, I was surprised that the story of the Pixar worlds depicts the continuation of the original movie. Originally, the story of the Kingdom Hearts series has a basic pattern that Sora and others are involved in scenes drawn from the original movie, which is the case for Tangled and Frozen. However, Toy Story and Monsters Inc. became a pattern that draws the subsequent time of the movie as canon based on the request of the original creators. Whether the story of each world becomes that pattern depends on the intention of the creators and producers of the movie. So basically, throughout the series, Sora's adventures were incorporated based on the movie's plot. Meaning, with or without Sora, the game still told the same story as the original movie. But this time, particularly Toy Story and Monsters, Inc., Sora's adventures are actually part of these world stories. Meaning, this is the continuation of Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. As for the timeline of Kingdom Hearts 3 in these titles, the events in Toy Box took place between Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3, while the events in Monstropolis took place after the Monsters, Inc. movie. Moving on to who is actually in charge of the cutscenes, episodes of Sora and others were also incorporated well in the story based on the development of original films. That is the achievement of Oka and the level design team. In the recent Kingdom Hearts series, Oka created a scenario that will serve as the platform according to the location and flow of battles and events decided by him and the level design team. Although I do eventually get involved, mainly just fixing some dialogues, priority in the development of the story in each world is mostly given to the level design team. 
Apparently, Nomura-san is not the sole mastermind of the scenarios in Kingdom Hearts 3. Majority of the cutscenes and dialogues were written by Masaru Oka and his team. Oka-san has been involved in multiple Kingdom Hearts titles and Final Fantasy titles, including Final Fantasy 7, 8, and 10. Moving on to future collaborations, in addition to Pixar, Marvel and Lucasfilm also joined the Disney group. So in the future, will the candidates for the appearing world expand further? That's right. However, contracts for games will be connected to separate companies, and because they may already have contracts with other game companies for each individual titles, including them in Kingdom Hearts is not that easy, even if they join the Disney group. That was the reason why Mickey only appeared once in Kingdom Hearts 1. Mickey's game from another company was to be released at the same time, so we were told we can't use him. But I persisted and got a concession proposal that it's okay if Mickey appears only in one cut and only as a silhouette at a level of waving his hands from a far distance. That is how that scene in Kingdom Hearts 1 came to be as a result of taking that one opportunity to maximum use. This means that there's a chance that Marvel and Lucasfilm may enter the realm of Kingdom Hearts, but because of their contracts with other gaming companies, it may be difficult to include them in the series. It doesn't mean it's impossible since Nomura-san was able to include Mickey in Kingdom Hearts 1, despite the fact that Mickey was already in another game at that time. And that concludes the second section of the interview. So what are your thoughts on this interview? Should I include Marvel and Star Wars in Kingdom Hearts? Let me know in the comments down below. In our next video, we will discuss the returning worlds such as Olympus, the graphics and resemblance of the worlds to the original movies, and the story behind the Classic Kingdom mini-games. If you're in Japan or have access to Amazon Japan, I seriously recommend getting the Ultimania even if you can't read Japanese. I mean, just look at these graphics. They look so beautiful. You guys should definitely get this. I'll put the link in the description box below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit that bell button so you won't miss my next video. Mata ne!